G'day. I thought I'd talk to you about the Vox 730 I've got on the bench here. It's a fairly rare amp, apparently about 100 were made, and uh, quite a few got destroyed fairly quickly after they were made for one reason or another, and there's about 25, they say, left in the world. There's lots of information on the web about this uh, amp. It was used on the Beatles, Abbey Road, and Revolver albums. The, uh, the amp's quite interesting because it's a hybrid. It's a mix of solid state, in the preamp, the whole front end section is built using germanium transistors, which were fairly new at the time. And there was a move amongst guitar amp manufacturers towards transistor amplifiers, away from valve amplifiers. They used the classic EL84 tube output stage um, with one twist, and we'll come to the twist in a minute. Um, so it's a tube power amp, germanium transistor preamp. Um, there's a spring reverb in it too. Let me take you inside. So we can see a cartridge there and it is in fact a ceramic phono pickup cartridge. And down the other end of the spring is an identical ceramic pickup cartridge. You can see the transformer there. That transformer drives that ceramic pickup cartridge to generate the sound travels down the spring and it's picked up here. The spring part is uh, you know, conventional, it's a spring reverb. What's unusual is the use of the piezo pickups. At the time a patent was held by Hammond um, about the use of magnetic coils to drive the, uh, the spring and to pick up the signal off the spring. And I think they were charging something like a dollar or a pound or something for use uh, of that design. Uh, in amps. Vox didn't want to pay that and so went out of their way to design their own pickup and driving system to save that dollar. It makes it a pretty uh, unique sounding spring reverb that's for sure. You can see the transistor circuitry all built on a tag strip along here. The uh, brown box there is the opto cell driven with a little 12 volt lamp which is part of the vibrato circuit. The amp's two channels, and it's upside down at the moment, of course, but you can see the lights that would normally be shining down to illuminate the controls. Two channels. One channel is uh, effectively a clean channel with reverb. And then the first channel is uh, a channel with vibrato, no reverb, and the distortion. The distortion circuit's quite unique. What it does and here's a little foot switch which you need to control it, is that uh, it uses back-to-back -back germanium diodes, very similar to a fuzz box technique, and then switches in a boost circuit to recover the signal level after that hard clipping with the back-to-back -back germanium. The other thing that's interesting, and I'm going to pause this video and flip this amp over to show you, is uh, the little trick they did and the little quirk with the output power stage. Here's the amp right side up, and we've got it powered back on. The, um, the circuit for this, if you actually look at the original drawings for the power amplifier stage, show a fairly conventional output transformer. Um, when I got this amp, um, immediately it was apparent, and here is the output transformer, I'll bring you in a bit closer. And you can see there's a quite a large number of wires coming out of that, and that's all the, uh, the primary side of the transformer. The secondary side, which is what goes to the speaker outputs, is around here. So for a conventional uh, output transformer, that's uh, a lot of wires, and they come down here. Some go to the large filtering capacitor, and others down to this little turret board, which pokes through to the other side of the chassis and connects up the circuitry down there. So immediately uh, what became apparent is this isn't a conventional output stage. It's actually an ultralinear design. Ultralinear was a circuit uh, that uh, was used extensively into the 50s and early 60s um, on power stages for output to minimise distortion by choosing the right extra taps to add onto the stage. And that's where these extra wires come, where taps have been added and picked off 
voltages on that primary stage, they're fed back to the screens of the output tubes. And um, if chosen just correctly and everything's tweaked just right, you can minimize distortion. So the objective is to bring distortion to a minimum. Um, that's an interesting thing to do for a guitar amplifier. Um, it doesn't do much to change power or anything else that might be desirable. Now, one interesting uh, concept behind all this is that there was a patent that applied, a bit like our story with the spring reverb, about uh, use of the ultralinear circuit. And it's curious that in their drawings, which is all that anyone has seen besides the few techniques, techs that saw them back in the day, is that uh, all that would have been seen is a conventional stage and not the ultralinear. But indeed, it is an ultralinear output stage. So there, Vox 730.